de Paloma à l'occasion du festival This Is Not Love Song. Nous sommes en compagnie de Yak pour cette session Ferrarock This Is Not Live Song. Welcome to the big white studio for the radio sessions Ferrarock and Paloma This Is Not a Love Song. We have the pleasure to welcome Yak. Thank you guys for being here.
said this hungry heart is reading again I said this hungry heart never ever knows when to stop take myself for a ride next time I'm falling I never been so alive and I want it dans la session euh, Ferra Rock euh, Psyché Punk Survolté Garage Noise Sous Acide La créativité euh, et la rage se partagent l'affiche dans la musique de Yak Your, your music is uh, quite uh, refreshing It's loud, it's noisy, it's psychedelic It's pop, it's uh, rock It's punk It's a, a huge ensemble of uh, many different uh, things if you listen closely to it How, how did it come to you how is is it something that you have to work for because usually bands you know think too much about their music and if we have to uh, reveal a little secret for this session you didn't want to pick up any songs you just want to play so maybe it's an it's an illustration of uh, how you create music uh yeah well we just uh, all get together and we put strap-ons on our cast gear and then then we make bread <laughs> I suppose we never wanted any limit to be what we could do. We didn't want to be stylistically something. I suppose that was quite important. It's important for us to have the freedom to be able to um, use the genre. It's rock and roll. It's pretty tedious. But try and um, use all the influences which are in that and try and broaden it to as, you know, far we, you know, as far as we can and not have any kind of, oh, we're going to be do garage or rock or punk. If you speak to someone who's like 50, 55, who grew up with maybe punk or Sex Pistols, they wouldn't dream of like Led Zeppelin or something like that, you know, it would be out of the thing, but we don't have those cultural things, you know, we're not that age, so mm. we can kind of take... From all sorts, I suppose. Donc en fait, euh, leur principe, c'est surtout de, bah, ils sont tous les trois, euh, ils, atta ils attachent la ceinture et puis euh, et ils se lancent. Après, il y a des tas de choses qui sortent au fur et à mesure. Leur principe de conception n'est certainement pas de se dire bon, euh, il y a toujours, il y a toujours ces groupes qui, euh, qui disent, qui rêvent de Led Zeppelin, qui rêvent des Sex Pistols ou des choses comme ça. Eux, euh, c'est les choses viennent euh, au fur et à mesure et ils veulent pas se fixer de limites et de délimitations. Le premier album vient de sortir. Ils ont choisi de travailler avec Steve Mackis, pas la même génération qu'eux. C'est quelqu'un qui a travaillé avec plein de monde assez différents. On peut citer The Aurors, Pulp, bien évidemment. Alors ils l'ont choisi en se disant, ça va être un homme sage qui va nous calmer. Ou est-ce qu'il comptait sur sa forme de folie à lui um, You decided for the, the first album to um, work with uh, Steve Mackay Again, not the same generation, but he has kind of a nice roster like MIA, The Aurors, and Pulp. Is it something that you were looking for? So maybe someone who could maybe just help you? Uh... Well, firstly, I mean, none of this was planned at all. Not, not any stage it was, you know, the idea of me playing with Andy again, we'd known each other. We had no uh, idea of sort of a career or anything kind of that. We were just kind of playing. But it just so happened that we played our first gig after getting some bacon and eggs down a corner shop. Someone said, do you want to support our band? I was like, yeah, okay. We played the gig and Phil, who's there, was doing the sound. And he said, do you want to record? So then we recorded. So it kind of built up to, you know, this all kind of fit in place. I mean, nothing was premeditated. Is it But something that can happen only in London? No, I don't think so. I mean, I've been there for ages. I started playing when I was 12, so I've been playing a long time. I kind of get, gave up before doing anything like this, you know, complete, and still have now, I just still don't look at it as a career. Mm. But um, Steve Mackey was just another per person that came in that was just, we really got on with him. 
he invited us down to his garage, at the garage, him and uh, Douglas Hart from Jesus Mary Chain. <clears throat> and they just recorded us with three microphones and just let us play for two hours. And then we looked at the back and we was like, well, that's, <laughs> that's really exciting. And there's no kind of, you know, thinking beforehand, you know, no premeditated kind of thing. So we tried to make an album that was trying to capture that, which I think maybe at the moment, especially with guitar music, maybe especially from UK, that it's too much thinking and it's quite important to capture that kind of human element of, of free people playing your dad's music. <laughs> maybe. Non, donc encore une fois, l'esprit est, est encore là, c'est-à-dire qu'en gros, ils ont commencé par jouer euh, entre la pizzeria et le kebab, et puis quelqu'un est venu euh, les voir en leur disant « Est-ce que tu veux faire la première partie de notre groupe ?» Ça joue juste à côté. Et en allant jouer dans le, dans le bar d'à côté, entre guillemets, ils ont rencontré Phil qui fait maintenant leur son, et euh, qui a dit « Ah ben, moi, je peux, euh, je peux vous faire le son, est-ce que vous voulez enregistrer ?» Et de fil en aiguille, il y a eu la rencontre avec Steve McKay. Il ne voit pas les trucs, il n'y a pas eu de plan de carrière. Il joue, lui, depuis euh, Oli, depuis euh, l'âge de 12 ans. Il fait les choses comme elles viennent et euh, bah, les rencontres font, font créer, les, créer les occasions en fait. Ah, ça nous amène peut-être pour conclure à parler de la manière dont ils envisagent la musique. Visiblement, ils la font de façon très naturelle et viscérale, mmh. euh, ce qui ne les empêche pas d'avoir un album très euh, travaillé, créatif et foisonnant d'idées. Ça veut dire que bah, c'est juste euh, des rockers et pas du tout des travailleurs. So do you, in the end, do you consider yourselves as, a, as a workers in the, in the music you do? Is it a job or uh, will it <coughs> ever be? You said you don't consider it. Mean, I mean, I don't know what, I mean, all the jobs I've had, I've never enjoyed. So. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I enjoy this. And in that case, it would not be a job. In financial terms, it probably wouldn't be a job. <laughs> But it's something that I definitely enjoy doing. And um, I think bands should just come and explore every time. I don't you know, care about your ears or your livers. Or anyone else, it should be kind of like a full-blown kind of explosion every night. And I think if you start thinking about it too much as a career, then you start looking after yourself. It's a bad idea. <laughs> Et donc, oui, comme il le disait aussi auparavant, il n'y a pas vraiment de processus de, de création euh, réfléchi. Quand ils ont fait l'enregistrement de l'album, ils ont enregistré pendant trois heures et, euh, et après, ça a été euh, édité euh, au fil. Ils se sont rendus compte que l'énergie était là et que donc c'était ce qu'ils qu voulaient. Après, ça sera un job peut-être financièrement, mais euh, tous les jobs qu'il n'a jamais eu, ils n'ont jamais plus. Donc, c'est plus euh, une question de, bah, de, de voir ce qu'il qu adviendra. Et, euh, et de toute façon, c'est la musique et la création euh, comme ça. Thank you, thanks again for accepting our invitation.
Oedipus never ever did invite us. 